So trash elbow injuries are um, injuries that you may not be able to recognize on x-rays. So the radiographic appearance seemed harmless. That is what uh, trash calls for. And it's a, these are all the elbow lesions that you may not be able to see on x-rays, but they are, they are able to see you. So it's unossified fractures, uh, shear fractures, cartilage injuries, and uh, sometimes even monchagia. So to simplify, if you look at the literature, what gets missed on elbow injuries are in kids who are less than 10 years of age. They all had falls. They're all closed, isolated injuries, and neurovascular examination is normal. For example, you look at the dislocation in an 8-year-old child. This is after a reduction. You can see that the reduction is concentric, but then there is a small piece that you can see um, on the anterior aspect. This is one month later, and the patient is stiff. <clears throat> so you try and see what, uh, what happened. We got an MRI here, and you can see that there is a radial head piece and a coracoid piece, and, um, and that the radial head is subluxing posteriorly. So if you go back and look on the x-rays, you can see that there was a small flake of bone, but um, it seemed like it would be harmless, that small piece, but it actually had a big cartilage piece attached to it. It was actually half of the radial head. So we went uh, late, uh, removed uh, a small loose body, did a capsulotomy, opened up uh, the, uh, the joint. Um, you can see the radial head is kind of, uh, you know, trashed or, um, or damaged. Um, and this is three months post-op. The radial head is still subluxing. Um, and there is uh, the rotation that is supination pronation is only 30 degrees and it's 10 to 120. So uh, these patients don't do well. Radial head fractures patients, if you miss it, they would end up with arthritis in three or four months. It's not over the time of years, just months. And they would present with a similar finding. Your only option here is a radial head excision once a patient gets arthritic. So uh, do not miss this uh, lesion. How do you prevent this late uh, or misdiagnosis? One is that Pay careful attention to physical examination, uh, and then read the x-rays carefully and have a very strong suspicion that if the patient has swelling and uh, ecchymosis, then uh, probably advanced imaging should be considered if x-rays are normal. And we'll go over some illustrative cases. So this is the uh, patient history of dislocation, and it's a red flag when you see that there is dislocation in a small flake of bone. The location of swelling can help you to determine um, uh, the uh, diagnosis as well. You can see this is a lateral condyle fracture, but is the lateral condyle fracture intra-articular going like this, or whether it's a salter two going across on the medial side, you don't know that. But if you look at the swelling in this case, you can see on the medial side the patient has significant swelling and bruising. That means that even though it looked like a lateral condyle fracture, probably it wasn't a lateral condyle, it went all the way across on the medial side. and um, and soft tissue shadows should also help you. You can see on the medial side, uh, you don't see, too, uh, on the lateral side, you don't see too much soft tissue in this case. This is another case. But see the soft tissue uh, shadows on this side here? That should alert you that even if you don't see any, any fractures, there is an injury on, that, uh, on the medial side. So soft tissue shadows on x-rays are extremely important. Um, you should know how the normal tear drop looks. Uh, you should know that the capitulum is wider posteriorly than it is anteriorly. These are some normal uh, variants that you need to identify. How about the fat pad sign? So the posterior fat pad sign, which is a black arrow, is almost always abnormal. If you see it, that means that there is an intraarticular injury, posterior fat pad sign. Anterior fat pad sign is normal. So in this case, this patient had a fracture, which you can't see on the x-ray. The MRI shows the extent of the fracture going in. The anterior fat pad is normal. However, uh, if you have significant anterior fat pad, it's called a sale sign, like you've seen here. Then that indicates effusion or, um, or uh, hemarthrosis. The radiocapitular line should, uh, should be uh, aligned. That means the um, line should point towards the capitulum when you draw a line across the uh, proximal radius. And that is true even on oblique x-rays. So in all x-rays, you should see it but not in kids who are less than four years of age. So this is a patient, a normal x-ray, but it's eccentric, but it is, um, it is uh, within normal limits. So there is some variability in very young kids, less than four, but after that, you, they should always line up. If it doesn't, there is something wrong. Then you should also differentiate between a dislocation and transficial fracture. Dislocation almost 
never happens in kids, but you know, never is kind of a relative term. But um, you look at this X-ray, and you don't know whether it's a dislocation or it's a transficial fracture. Um, if you look at the directions, the transficial fractures are al almost always posteromedial, whereas the dislocation is almost always posterolateral. So if you look at the AP X-ray, if it's going medial, it's more likely to be a transficial fracture. If it's lateral, then it's a posterolateral dislocation, which is very uncommon. Um, you can see the, uh, the arthrogram is a good way of trying to see what injury is uh, present. Here it's a transficial fracture. And um, here is a kid with a six-year-old with a lateral condyle fracture. I'm just showing how an arthrogram is done. Um, just one millimeter, uh, one ml of uh, contrast uh, through the posterior approach, and you can see the entire joint well. So you should learn how to do a proper arthrogram. If you have suspicion, you don't have access to uh, imaging, patient is not affording, then arthrogram is always an alternative. You can do an arthrogram and try and diagnose what the injury is. Here it's a lateral condyle fracture that was fixed. You look at a few cases here, four-year-old girl, um, you see that there is something wrong on the lateral side. Uh, it's a lateral condyle fracture, but it, look at the intraarticular part of it. Um, uh, right in this area, there is something wrong, and that's a capitular capitulum uh, piece. And uh, so it's a lateral condyle fracture with a separate capitular piece. Uh, we are treated with it open reduction. You can see the uh, fixation, um, uh, um, and the key is to get the intraarticular uh, piece right. Um, the terminology can be confusing, especially we see uh, some residents who are not used to looking at kids' x-rays called medial condyle and epicondyle interchangeably, which is not true. This is medial epicondyle. Medial condyle fractures are extremely rare injuries. Uh, you see the radial head fractures, lateral condyle or capitulum fractures, and then you can also get lateral epicondyle fractures. So don't say that all fractures are on the lateral side or lateral condyle fractures. There are epicondyle fractures that are very rare but you can see it, and same on the medial side, it's common to have medial epicondyle fractures, whereas condylar fractures are very rare on the medial side. And then if, it, if the fracture goes through the physis, then it's a transficial fracture. So just, uh, just use a uniform or standard nomenclature for, uh, for these fractures. Uh, this 10-year-old injury, what do you think is wrong? There is a small piece here that you see it. The tro this is a trochlea fracture. And uh, you can see on the CT scan, there's a flap of trochlea. If you look at the literature, there's no reported cases. It doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Uh, but uh, you have to treat it. So this, is, uh, this was treated with an arthrotomy uh, and uh, fixation with the headless screws. And all shear fractures, either through the capitulum or the trochlea, treated very similar fashion. Um, and this is, you can see, this is an intra-op view of the fracture. Uh, we put it back with, uh, with the headless screw. This is the post-op images. The patient did well, but uh, the key is to recognize the injury. Uh, this is a medial condyle fracture. It's a very rare fracture. Less than 1% of elbow injuries are medial condyle. Very high rates of, um, of uh, complications. Uh, so this patient was uh, treated uh, and um, used screws here, but the patient uh, did have a little bit of uh, um, uh, fishtail or AVN. Uh, in that area. Uh, this is a two-year follow-up. Patient is asymptomatic. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any issues, but uh, just to point out that medial condyle fractures do happen, and uh, you've got to fix it and follow the patient a little bit long-term because it has very high rates of complications. Seven-year-old boy, um, uh, this, he had a dislocation that was reduced, and what do we see here? If you just look at the patient's arm, you know that there is something wrong here that, you know, so much of swelling. Uh, so part of the swelling is because of a tight ACE wrap, but uh, the patient had um, uh, a fracture. Anytime you have an elbow dislocation with a fracture, it's called a complex elbow dislocation, and you'd, uh, you want to look for, uh, for the reason to, uh, to have um, uh, so much of swelling or injuries, and you can get an MRI. One of the commonest complications of a complex elbow dislocation is stiffness. So you want to fix and start moving it rather than giving them a cast for four to six, uh, six weeks. They're definitely going to have permanent stiffness. So this patient, you can see the injury here. MRI was obtained. You can see there is subluxation. It's a fracture of the uh, tip of the... Uh, um, of the coronoid, so just like a terrible triad in an adult, you get a terrible triad in kid. Uh, you can see the coronoid fracture uh, here. We opened it, the ulnar nerve was isolated here, and um, 
That's the joint line. That's the fracture there. This is a closer view of the fracture. It's entirely cartilaginous fracture. You can see that piece. Um, so we fix it with, a, with one K-wire, and then uh, there is a loop of uh, suture that goes around and tied on the dorsum of the ulna, and then we had to repair the lateral ligament um, 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 uh, as well. So this is the post-op x-ray. You see as if the K-wire is not holding anything because it's a cartilaginous piece. Um, and the suture anchor from the uh, uh, ligament repair. Um, and the, cave, uh, the pin was pulled at four weeks. The patient uh, uh, did fine at one year follow-up. Um, another patient, nine-year-old with, uh, with a dislocation here. And what you see here, which you should not miss, um, is an entrapped medial epicondyle uh, fracture. And it's, it's not too, uh, too difficult to miss when it's trapped like this, but it may be difficult if the elbow appears to be um, to be concentrically reduced and still there is difficulty in motion or the piece is really small, then it could be missed. And so there are a lot of case reports on missed medial epicondyle fractures. Uh, you don't need an MRI for this, uh, but you need an ORIF. Uh, uh, this is my partner's case. It's a capitulum shear fracture, 11-year-old girl. You can see this, and it was fixed. However, even though it was fixed, you look at the x-ray and you see that the gap is more on the lateral view. This patient was followed up at one week and what you see here is that the radial head is subluxed posteriorly and um, this subluxation could be because of a missed stretch or iatrogenic lateral collateral ligament injury. So then the repair was done, the patient was taken back to the OR and you can see the suture anchors for the lateral collateral ligament uh, repair uh, so that the joint uh, is restored. Uh, one last case is a 10-month-old child uh, is a transficial fracture. You can see it. One of the ways to know is if you look at the capitulum, it lines up with the radial head so that you know that it's not an elbow dislocation. And the other way is the direction. It's posteromedial. So this patient needs the um, needs a reduction, arthrogram done, and then um, uh, fix it with K-wires. In summary, normal elbow development and an anatomy should be thoroughly understood. Uh, you get a dislocation with a bone piece of unknown origin. You can get an MRI, do an arthrogram, but don't miss them. And most of the, most of these lesions.